Good day. That's how every day should start. Everything should be good. Everything should be prim and proper when we are in the class. This is lecture number 28, and by now, excitement must be running high. More information on how you're going to invest, more readable and recognizable things on the TV screens and the newspapers. So, we talked about local environment, and we also talked a little bit about investing internationally. Remember, it's the age of the IT. It's the age of e-commerce and globalization. You can invest any way you want to. If you have the resources, you can invest here locally in the country or globally wherever you want to. So you can maybe buy shares in the US or the UK and investors, they can do the same here in our own country as well. All you need is a stockbroker, an internet connection and a phone and you're on your way to doing business internationally. That was what we talked about when we talked about investing internationally. You could use ADRs, the American Depository Receipts. You could have talked about Global Depository Receipts. The beauty is that you are away from all the local currency fluctuations. And we talked about a very exciting another product called Derivative Securities. Now, in the past two decades or so, Derivative Securities have caught up and in fact gone ahead of our traditional equities because this gives you more leverage. This gives you leverage to trade more with little investments, which would be talked about a little bit later. But we talked about warrants. We talked about options. So what was warrants? Warrants are issued by firms. These are options that firms issue. And these are part of derivative securities. Other forms are futures, forwards, swaps, swaptions, and the warrants that I just mentioned about. In options, these are exchange traded. Options are not made by companies. They are generated or innovated by investors. You have the option, the right, but not the obligation to buy or sell, which would be referred to calls and puts in the options terminology. The calls would be buying, puts would be selling in the derivatives market or the options market. One of the biggest options market in the world is the Chicago Board of Options Exchange. We currently do not have an options exchange here in our country. We do have a futures market. We do have a vibrant futures market, but options is a bit ahead and maybe soon we'll find things on options as well. Of course, Option increases the possibilities of return. Obviously, it also increases the possibilities of risk. I just mentioned about futures. Now, we do have futures. We have, in fact, a short-term futures market with 30 days futures market and 60 days future market, but more so a 30 days futures market in which we have a futures contract, which is a standardized agreement between a buyer and a seller at a given date to be decided by the buyer and seller mutually at a precise price for the commodity or a squitty and you decide when you will be settling the contract. In futures, a good faith deposit is taken, also called a margin. Margin is required by both buyers and seller and this is there to offset any default risk factor. So you'd have a little bit of money there that you would be able to use as default risk factor. Bonds was something we talked about. Bonds and bond fundamentals and bond principles. And what we had talked about was the identification of bonds, the maturity of bonds, the classification of bonds, the terms of repayment, registration, whether the bonds were convertible or not, and then we talked about bonds being issued how? Bonds could be issued by the issuer and we identify by the quality of the issuer, the quality of the coupon rates or the, the maturity date. We all need to know the maturity dates. We all need to know what is the percentage that you're going to get as a return and then who is behind the bond. Is it the government? Is it a corporation? Is it secure? Is it insecure? Does it have a good coupon rate? 
which would mean a good interest rate or what is going to be the period of time that you have to wait for the bonds to mature. Classification of bonds, the nature of the issuer, who is the issuer? What is the security or the underlying asset behind the bond? What is going to be the nature of the bond while we're talking about conversions? Will it be able to be converted into another asset? Will it be converted into a common stock? Can it be called by the issuer? Is it a callable bond? Is it a convertible bond? What are these factors that you're looking at? These are the things that we need to look before we invest into bonds. The classification. More importantly, generally, we do find bonds are convertible. These are convertible specifically into more so common stock. Obviously, since bonds is the same thing, when you talk about raising funds, so they may be converted into bonds, from bonds to equity. We need to know how we're going to be paid back, whether we're going to have an annuity stream, or a single lump sum is going to be paid back to us. So we need to understand these things while we are going to invest about bonds. What has been the procedure of bond pricing and the returns that we'll be looking at bonds? What is going to be the return, the valuation equations? What is going to be the yield to maturity? What is going to be the spot rate? What is going to be the realized compound yield? What is going to be the current yield? And what is going to be the accrued interest? These are things that we talked about while we're talking about bond pricing and returns. We need to know all these things, whether we're going to be paid once, whether we're going to be paid twice a year, or we're going to be paid once only as a lump sum. We needed to understand what the yield to maturity would be. We needed to understand the discount rate that equates the future cash flows with the present value of the bond. We needed to understand whether the current price of the bond was good, was underpriced or overpriced. By tradition, bond yields to maturity based on semi-annual compounding. So maturity dates and the yield that we are going to get till the time of maturity, or we need to understand whether it's going to be good for us or not. That would all depend on what are required rate of return is. We talked about required rate of return while we were talking about the fundamental analysis in equities. So we need to understand what sort of returns are we looking at when we're looking at these secured or unsecured uh, fixed income assets. So we looked at some major assumptions in the cash flows of the bonds and the assumptions of the yield in maturity conclusions and calculations. So we found out that the requirement was that the proceeds of the bond or the returns that you would be getting from the bonds could be reinvested into the bonds to get a better yield. We're talking about compounding. We're not talking about simple interest because when we reinvest, obviously we're going to get a greater deal of returns on our principal amounts. So if we are going to reinvest our profits, we are going to reinvest into the same there is going to be a different rate of return and a different rate of interest because it was already predetermined what is going to be the rate of interest on uh, the time when we were investing earlier. But obviously, when we are going to invest more money into the bonds, the rate of return shall be better. Return shall be greater because returns are based on the time maturity periods and the nature of the bond. When we're talking about returning on bonds, we must understand, we try to do the best possible choice that we can get is by comparing bonds with other bonds as well. So maybe if they're similar bonds, we need to understand what are the other bonds and the issuers of other bonds offering to investors as well. Maybe we can get a better deal. Please be assured that you'll have different issuers for different bonds, giving you different returns. We have then to compare these with each other to find out which is a better investment. Obviously, yield curves will tell you all this. Better yield and time are the factors that are going to determine what investment you're going to make. And when we talk about bond prices, we must understand that these bond prices reflect 
whether they are going to be given to you at a premium or a discount and these are then changed with a minimal percentage of 1 8 and 1 30 seconds. So when we talk about corporate bonds, we can talk about 1 8. When we're talking about government bonds, we talk about 1 30 seconds of a, a point. So minimum price increments are a factor that we must look at when we're looking at price changes and as percentages of par value of the bond. This is how we look at the bond price and changes to the effect of in percentage terms. Generally speaking, corporate bonds are maybe more riskier than government bonds. At least that's how people wonder. The risk involved in bonds. There are a lot of risks that could be involved in bonds. Nothing is riskless. Nothing is risk free. So there could be price risk in bonds. What we're looking at the best possibility of investing into bonds, we must look at the risks of bonds. Equities have risk. Bonds also have risk. Not so much as equities have, but to some extent, these are there as well. So if we were to look at price risk, what would that refer to? Price risk refer to the chance of monetary loss. You could have a monetary loss as one of the factors of a price risk in risk associated to bonds. For instance, there could be a default risk, a risk to pay back. The likelihood of the firm defaulting on its loan repayments. That would be a price risk. Another risk could be interest rate risk. What would an interest rate risk be? An interest rate risk would be the variability of interest rate. Changes in interest rates would be one of the factors that would upstage all the predetermined returns that you were expected to get. So the risk of default, the risk of variability in interest rates, an interest rate hike or an interest rate drop would both affect your returns. So we need to look at these risks as well when we're even looking at. Please keep in mind, there's no such thing as a free meal. So maybe, maybe we do come across times when there'll be risk associated with these fixed income securities as well, the nature of default. Sovereign risk. What would happen if a government had issued a bond and was unable to pay? Without naming names, we did have in the previous years and people who had invested in that uh, bond, it was a bond issued by a company which was a government-owned company, a utility company which issued bonds. And if you looked at the fact that it was a government-backed utility company, the question of default of payments couldn't have arisen, but it did. The company was unable to pay back the money that it had borrowed. And in lieu of the bonds that were issued, people were upset by what they were coming across. So another financial institution, another government-owned institution had to come to the rescue to bail it out and make arrangements to pay the, the investors. So you have these risks. Another risk would be a convenience risk. And what would be a convenience risk be? Additional demands of management time. Maybe you need more time to repay. Maybe you need more time to look at the fact that there is inconvenience in payments and maybe they require more time to pay you back. Remember, there can be callable bonds and maybe the issuer calls back the bonds and pays you earlier. So that can be a convenience risk as well. Or the need to reinvest interest, poor marketability of the bond. These all are convenience risks that could affect the, the interest of the lender of the monies to the issuer. May bonds have a period of call protection and subsequently a decline in call premium. Convenient risk can be another factor in which Investor could be wary of the fact that these are things that could change the, the nature of the returns on investment. Additional demands on management time because of bonds being 
called by their issuer or the need to reinvest interest receivables. You are not actually paid the interest, but the issuer lets you know that instead of paying you the interest, they are going to put back that money into the bond. But that is not the right way to do things. People have made arrangements for all the cash flows of the future based on the investments they have done in the bonds. Any change in pattern, any change in future cash flow is going to drastically disturb the, the, the cash flow situations of individuals and companies and institutions who have invested into the bonds as well. So interest rate risk or default rate risk or convenience risk can all attribute to the goodness or the badness of investing in bonds. Although bonds are considered to be comparatively less riskier. Please keep in mind, while we are talking about bonds, that bonds are heavily relied upon by institutions as well as a better place to invest money than in traditional banking system. So sometimes they feel that bonds could be a good way of investing and sometimes they feel that parking temporary money into bonds is also another way of getting better returns than in the traditional banking system. Now we talked about interest rate risk as well. And interest rates have a significant impact on the returns and the yields of bonds. So rates and basis points are the terminologies that we use while we talk about bond returns and bond repayments. Basis right. Basis would be the points that are referred to an in interest. 100 basis points equals to 1. 100 basis points would refer to 1. So 100 would be 100th one of time of uh, 1 digit. So these 1% returns would be referred to as 100th of a basis point return based on percentage. So interest rates are in fractions. And since they have a bigger impact, even a fractional decimal point effect and change in interest does affect the bonds as well. Now since money markets are short term, bond investments may be very long term, so there is a short term risk less rate because small spikes, smaller volatilities based on smaller time periods can not affect the larger longer maturity periods of bonds sometimes a short-term riskless rate can do no harm to the bonds as such. But it does provide the foundation for other matters of concern to the bonds. It can be one of the factors that you would associate with when you're referring uh, to the risk involved in the interest rate regime of bonds and returns. Other rates differ too. Other interest rates will differ maybe because of maturity, differential. Longer periods or shorter periods or intermediate periods obviously would have different interest rates. Also what would be important is to understand the security risk premiums. Sometimes when there are situations in a country or a region where you have security risk, you may have extra premium to be charged on bonds and investors or insurance as well. So these premiums will really be of a matter of concern when we're talking about interest rates and risk-free profits or risk factors. What about maturity differential? There is going to be a term structure of interest rates. The difference in maturity levels plays a significant role in calculating interest rates. So the term structure of interest rate is accounts for the relationship between time and yield for the bonds. This maturity period, this yield on bonds and the time is the same in every other respect except the differential in time period. The risk premium is also spread. The yield is spread or there is a yield differential. So maturity, risk, time all affects the returns on bonds. Also, these are associated with the issuers particular situation. The risk premium will be more for companies which would maybe in a category that we talked about was maybe double B or a single B or a C category 
which may be more speculative in nature or a company with which would be investable grade investments with a grade rating of triple a or triple b would have a lesser um, risk premium like we have vanilla coupons or vanilla bonds which would mean something like a junk bond you need to understand the more risk there is the more premium will be paid on that it all will depend on who the issuer is it is associated with the issuer's special or particular situation so it will all depend on whether the investor is willing to lend money to the issuer or is not going to take a risk and maybe go in for a, a bond which is securer and safer so maturity differentials do take effect when we talk about interest obviously interest rates for shorter periods of time will have lesser premiums longer period of times will have greater premium because they'll be able to use that money for a longer period of time these are the term structures of interest rates and they account for the relationship between time and yield remember when we talking about bonds it's got everything to do with time and yield to maturity the time for yield to maturity is going to be one of the factors that we'll be discussing and we'll be talking about in, in the slides that come that i will later on ask you to see on the tv screens and we'll I'll put them there for your convenience now the determinants of interest rate what are the factors that are going to affect the interest rate what are the ingredients of the interest rate what are the different types of interest rate and what is going to move the interest rate figures in the right direction or in the wrong direction we can talk about real rate of interest the actual rate of interest without any window dressings the real rate of interest rate that must be offered to persuade investors to save rather than consume obviously the attraction must be there to save interest rates play havoc with people's life and interest rate play havoc with equity prices and i'll get back to that very soon now the rates the real rates what are they they are the rates at which real capital physically reproduces itself it has the ability to grow vertically it is the ability to grow phenomenally to give any real meaning to people who are willing to invest instead of consuming the funds available also then we need to compare it with the nominal interest rate or this is the difference between nominal and risk um, real rate of return a nominal rate interest rate would be a function of the real rate of interest and expected inflation premium very marginal very little but we talked about people investing monies for capital gain investing monies for supplementing their income unless we as a nation are not much into saving in fact if you look at the analysis of the region we would be uh, rated low as far as savings are concerned we as a cultural nation do not have the tendency to save we rather consume the monies earned more quicker than we should and then we end up with no money at all we would be better off if we were saving for the rainy day like other countries do in the region so to develop a habit or to build up a habit of saving rather than consuming the central bank the state bank would do a good job by giving you proper real interest rates interest rates that would attract the common man interest rates that would attract the investors to put money into savings regime so that they can grow themselves other determinants of the interest is our market interest rates on interest debt or real rate plus expected inflation you must understand that inflation interest rates and risk rest debt are all correlated obviously if you're not earning enough interest to stay ahead of inflation to stay ahead of the consumer price index to stay ahead of the kitchen inflation there's no point in investing 
and saving. That's precisely what happened in one of the southern American states in which by the time you withdrew your money and took it to the shopkeeper, the prices had already gone up. That was uncontrolled inflation. So time, real rate, riskless profit, and expected inflation all play a part in making a decision of whether to invest or to consume. Real estate is one of the reasons people invest into as means of saving monies than in paper prints. Maybe commodities and real estate is another alternative one goes to in times of bad inflation, high inflation. Real rate estimates obtained by subtracting the expected inflation, whatever you're expecting in future as a way of evaluating what is going to be the inflation in the future, what is going to be the cost of a certain product later is what you're going to make by expecting to make an estimate of what is going to be life like in future based on inflation. You have to understand that if you were to invest for the long term, if you were to invest for a fixed rate of return, you would have to make uh, uh, your homework do well for you by finding out what is actually going to be future inflation rate. If you were to save 100 rupees today for five years, and get an expected return on 10%, and if inflation was in double digits, maybe you'd end up better by consuming it now, because, or buying commodities. That is why a commodity is sometimes expected to be a better investment than keeping money in cash. So if you're keeping money in cash, it would really not be a good idea if you were to be and not investing in the right products, which would be used later when things are bad. In uh, countries that are, uh, have a growing economy or in countries that are going to be looked at by uh, views of being emerging economic uh, forces, so if we were to understand what is going to be the relationship between bond pricing, we need to understand how we're going to look at so. There is an inverse relationship between price and yield. Remember, inverse relationship of the bond between bond yields and bond price. Also, we need to understand that an increase in bond yields to maturity results in a smaller price decline than the gain associated with a decrease in yield. Bond price relationships. So, long term bonds, long term investments tend to yield more. They tend to be more price sensitive than short term bonds because short term may jo bhi changes aayenge, wo itna zyada impact nahi laenge, itna long term investments laenge because it will affect a longer maturity regime. So, an increase in bonds yield to maturity will result in smaller price declines than the gain associated with decrease in yield. That is important to understand. Also to understand is the relationship with respect to maturity. The relationship to respect to maturity is also important because they are not exact as they were when the duration is used. When we are calculating prices, we must understand the relationships with respect to maturity are not exact as they were when durations is used. Aapne time factor ko bhi dekhna. Aur jo cheez aapne dekhna while discussing price, uh, bond pricing relationships is that it is helpful to discuss how maturities and cash flow is measured by coupon rates. You have to understand the relationship of cash flows or future cash flows to the coupon rates. And coupon rates is the interest rate that is going to be given on your principal amount. Also, we must look at the coupon rates that must be considered while investing. So, when we look at the time factor, when we look at the yield to maturity, and we look at the relationship between pricing of the bond, we must understand that as maturity increases, price sensitivity increases at a decreasing rate. Once again, as maturity increases, the sensitivity increases at a decreasing rate. Okay, 
جیسے آپ اپنے میچورٹی لیولز کے قریب آ رہے ہیں تو سینسٹیوٹی کم ہوتی جائے گی بیکاز دی اینڈ ول بی دیئر اینڈ دیر بی نو ایکسائٹمنٹ اور والٹیلٹی اور اسپائک بیکاز دیر از ناٹ مچ ٹائم پرائز سینسٹیوٹی از انورسلی ریلیٹڈ ٹو اے بانڈس کوپن ریٹ یہ میں نے پہلے بھی کہا تھا کہ بانڈ کے کوپن ریٹ کے ساتھ انورس ریلیشن شپ ہے پرائز سینسٹیوٹی دا پرائز وچ از ڈفرینٹ فرام دی پار ویلیو اور دا پرنٹڈ ویلیو آف دی پرائز تو وی مسٹ لک ایٹ واٹ دا کوپن ریٹ از اینڈ ہاؤ وی کین لک ایٹ اٹ وین اٹس انورس ریلیٹڈ ٹو دی پرائز سینسٹیوٹی از آلسو انورسلی ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا یلڈ ٹو میچورٹی اٹس ریلیٹڈ ٹو دا بانڈ کوپن ریٹ اینڈ از آلسو انورسلی ریلیٹڈ ٹو یلڈ ٹو میچورٹی ایٹ وچ دی بانڈ از سیلنگ کرنٹ تو یہ ان کا انٹریکشن ہے اسپیشلی پرائز سینسٹیوٹی کا ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ ایٹ واٹ پرائز دا بانڈ از بینگ سولڈ رائٹ ناؤ پلس واٹ از دا بانڈس کوپن ریٹ یہ دونوں چیزوں کو آپ کو دیکھنا پڑے گا پھر آپ کو پرائز سینسٹیوٹی کا پتہ چلے گا کتنا انورسلی ریلیشن ہے ود دی کوپن ریٹ اینڈ ود دی یو ٹو میچورٹی ایٹ وچ دی بانڈ از سیلنگ بیکاز ایٹ اینی گیون ٹائم ایز فار ایز وی لوکنگ ایٹ میچورٹیز دی پرائز شیل ویری دا لانگر دی پیریڈ دا ہائر دی پرائز دا شارٹ دا پیریڈ ٹو میچورٹی دا لیسر دی پرائز بیکاز ہو سکتا ہے سیما اینول ایک بانڈ ہے اس میں وہ آپ کو انٹرسٹ دیتے رہے ہیں مے بی دی بانڈ ڈزنٹ ہیو اینی اکروڈ انٹرسٹ ان اٹ اینڈ دین مے بی وی کین ٹاک اباؤٹ دیز تھنگس ایز تھنگس دیٹ ول ناٹ افیکٹ دی پرائز سینسٹیوٹی آف اے بانڈ بیکاز پری ڈٹرمن ریٹس اینڈ اف دیر از نو چینج ان دا یلڈ ٹو میچورٹی اور اف دیر از نو چینج ان دی بانڈس پرائسنگ بیکاز ہم بات کر رہے ہیں فکس ریٹرن بانڈ کی ہم ایک ویریبل بانڈ کی بات ابھی نہیں کر رہے جس میں ریٹس ویری کرتے ہیں وتھ ٹائم اسپیشلی وی مسٹ انڈرسٹینڈ وائل میجرنگ بانڈ جیلڈس ہمیں دیکھنا ہے کہ بانڈ جیلڈس کے ریٹرنس کیا ہیں تو واٹ از گوئنگ ٹو بی دا یارڈ اسٹک ٹو میجر بانڈ جیلڈس کہ ہمیں مل کیا رہا ہے اسٹاکس میں تو ارننگ پر شیئر ہے اس سے ہم اندازہ لگا لیں گے بھائی یہ ارننگ پر شیئر ہے اور اس میں یہ ڈیویڈنٹس ہمیں پیچھے ملتے رہے ہیں so we can fairly understand what is going to be a return and that is on an annual to annual basis and since it's a variable you would know but what about bonds bonds to 5 saal ke liye book ho gaye hain aap unke sath you married to a bond for 5 10 15 20 years so there's going to be a different methodology to understand what a bond yield is going to be measured with the yield to maturity is the most commonly used in the previous slides we also talked the inverse relationship between prices and yield to maturity y2m kehlata hai aur ye most commonly used factor hai yields to hum stock market mein bhi use karte hain aur bonds mein jo hain yield to maturity y2m ko hum zyada consider karte hain because of the promised compound rate of return received from a bond purchased at the current market price and held to maturity اس کو جب ہم دیکھتے ہیں تو ہمیں پتہ چلے گا ہمیں کیا یلڈ ملے گی ہماری انویسٹمنٹ اس سے ہوگا یہ کہ یو ول بی ایبل ٹو کویٹ دا پرزنٹ ویلیو آف دی ایکسپیکٹڈ فیوچر کیش فلوز ٹو دا انیشیل انویسٹمنٹ جو بھی آپ نے اوریجنل انویسٹمنٹ کی ہے اس کے ساتھ آپ اس کو کویٹ کر سکیں گے کہ ایکسپیکٹڈ فیوچر کیش فلوز کیا ہیں اور پرزنٹ ویلیو کیا ہے آپ کی کرنٹ انویسٹمنٹ کا یا انیشیل انویسٹمنٹ اب اگر ہم کامن اسٹاک یا اکوٹی مارکیٹ کے حوالے سے دیکھیں So this is similar to the IRR or the internal rate of return. یہ آپ نے دیکھنا ہے کہ ایک بانڈ میں اپنی ان بلٹ انٹرنل ابلٹی کتنی ہے ٹو گیو اے ریٹرن دیٹ ول بی دا تھنگ دیٹ یو ول اکویٹ دا پرزنٹ ویلیو آف دی ایکسپیکٹڈ فیوچر کیش فلوز ٹو یور اور دی انوینشیل انویسٹمنٹس وچ از سملر ٹو دا سیم تھنگ ایز انٹرنل ریٹ آف ریٹرن سو Yield to maturity is the most commonly used product or benchmark or yardstick which which to evaluate کہ آپ کو ملے گا کیا اس انویسٹمنٹس کر رہے ہیں کیونکہ فکس ریٹ آف ریٹرن ہے یا فکس انویسٹمنٹ ہے تو اس میں ویریبلس بہت کم ہیں جس کی وجہ سے آپ کو دیکھنا ہے کہ بیسٹ پاسبل انویسٹمنٹ ایونیو یا بیسٹ پاسبل اپروچ کیا ہے ٹو مسائلنگ 
what to invest in, how much to invest. Now, I have told you that yield to maturity is और मैंने आपसे चांद लम्हे पहले जिक्र किया था इसके लिए इट विल बी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर यू टू अंडरस्टैंड जील टू मैच्योरिटी बाय लुकिंग एट द स्लाइड इन योर टीवी स्क्रीन्स बिकॉज़ बाय दिस इक्वेशन यू विल बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड द जील टू मैच्योरिटी कांसेप्ट मोर एंड यू विल बी एबल टू लुक एट द सॉल्यूशन फॉर जील टू मैच्योरिटी फॉर जीरो कूपन बॉन्ड और जीरो कूपन बॉन्ड जो होता है उसके अंदर रिमेंबर आपको डिस्काउंट पे बॉन्ड मिलेगा एंड मैच्योरिटी पे द पार और प्रिंटेड वैल्यू इज रिडीमेबल सो इन्वेस्टर्स अर्न द यील टू मैच्योरिटी इफ द बॉन्ड इज हेल्ड टिल मैच्योरिटी एंड ऑल कूपन्स आर रीइन्वेस्टेड इन द यील टू मैच्योरिटी इसमें वेरिएबल्स आप चेंज करते रहते हैं कितने कूपन्स आपने डालने हैं एंड देन यू फाइंड आउट that the yield to maturity will then be in effect made uh, to order depending on what the market value is what the period is and how many reinvestments are you going to make till the time of maturity kyunki ek aapne initial investment ki hai ek aapne original investment ki hai aur uske baad aapne wo reinvestment plan ke tahat bonds mein wapas paise lagaye hain usme yield to maturity mein farak aayega So investors earn the yield to maturity in the bonds that are held up till the end date of the maturity, and all coupons that they have earned or cashed are reinvested at yield to maturity. कि वो सारे पैसे instead of semi-annual receivables, they will receive all of the funds at the end of the maturity period. तो ये था जो आपने अभी स्लाइड देखी थी yield to maturity. Now yield to maturity के साथ साथ we must also understand the yield to call yield based on the deferred call period जो period रह गया है yield to call में you substitute the number have a look at another slide ये आपको yield to call का थोड़ा सा equation के बारे में clear concept करेंगे because this slide will again help you in understanding the concept of yield to maturity and yield to call you have already seen the yield to maturity slide have a look at the yield to call slide as well because right now we'll have a few more slides as well because then only you'll be able to make your concept clear about yield to maturity and yield to calls so you substitute the number of periods until first call date and for the period of the call price for face value so ye jab aap slide dekhenge to aapko zyada samajh aayega ke jo aap कॉलेबल बॉन्ड्स हैं हाउ यू सब्सटीट्यूट द नंबर ऑफ पीरियड्स कितनी देर के लिए आपने इन्वेस्टमेंट्स की हैं कितने उसमें पोर्शंस हैं एंड अंटिल फर्स्ट कॉल डेट एंड फॉर द कॉल प्राइस ऑफ द फेस वैल्यू द फेस वैल्यू पे क्या प्रिंटेड था कि किस दिन इसकी मैच्योरिटी है यील्ड टू मैच्योरिटी और इसमें अगर डेफर्ड कॉल पीरियड है तो वो आप डिफरेंस कैसे देखेंगे दिस विल बी मोर क्लियर टू यू when you've gotten a good uh, look at the slide and i hope you taking note of it as well so yield to maturity will be all about the reinvestments of the profits that you've deferred and will be reinvesting into the bond again to be used at at the end of the maturity period and then you will use it as a lump sum obviously compounding effect zyada hota hai so yield to maturity or yield to call mein thoda farak hai जिसमें डेफर्ड अमाउंट आ जाती है और यील्ड टू मैच्योरिटी वुड बी द इंटायर पीरियड फॉर विच द बॉन्ड वर ओरिजिनली फ्लोटेड इन दो चीज़ों के बाद ही आप महसूस करेंगे कि कंपाउंड जील का क्योंकि ये इफेक्ट है कंपाउंडिंग का तो जो रियलाइज कंपाउंड जील्ड है वो क्या होगा सो इट इज़ गोइंग टू बी द रिटर्न दैट यू विल गेट वंस यू एक्चुअली अर्न ऑन ए बॉन्ड गिवन द री ऑफ द कूपन्स एट वेरिंग रेट जाहिर है कि जो छः माह कबल आप किसी इन्वेस्टमेंट करेंगे उसका रेट कुछ और होगा जो छः माह बाद करेंगे और उसके बाद छः माह के करेंगे उन सारों के वेरिएबल इंटरेस्ट रेट्स होंगे वंस अगेन वेरी ब्रीफली लुक एट द स्लाइड क्योंकि आपको ये आर सी वाई या रियलाइज कंपाउंड झील का कुछ पता चलेगा दैर इज दी टोटल फ्यूचर डॉलर डिवाइडेड बाई परचेज प्राइस ऑफ बॉन्ड क्योंकि ओरिजिनल इन्वेस्टमेंट के बारे में आपको पता होना इम्पॉर्टेंट है तो ये हराइजन रिटर्न एनालिसिस है एंड बॉन्ड्स 
ریٹرنز آر بیسڈ آن ازمپشنز اباؤٹ ری انویسٹمنٹ ریٹس کیونکہ ریٹس ول ویری ریٹس ویری کریں گے کیوں ویری کریں گے ویری اس لیے کریں گے کہ اس میں آپ نے ڈفرنٹ پیریڈس کے اوپر انویسٹمنٹس کیے ہیں تو ظاہر ہے جتنا زیادہ ٹائم ہورائزن ہوگا جیسے ہورائزن ریٹرن انالیس اتنا ہی پیریڈ فرق کرے گا ایز نیئر یو آر ٹو دی میچورٹی ڈیٹ ریٹس آف ریٹرن ول بی لیسر ایز فار اوے ایز یو آر فرام میچورٹی پیریڈس ریٹس ول بی مور بیکاز دی ایشور ول بی ایبل ٹو یوز دی منی مور دین فار دا ٹائم پیریڈ دیر از نیئر ٹو دی میچورٹی ڈیٹس سو ویری ایبل ریٹس ول آلسو افیکٹ دی ریٹ آف ریٹرن اینڈ آئی ایم شیور دری تھری اور فور اسلائڈس دیٹ جسٹ کون بائی ول گیو یو بیٹر ان سائڈ to the price uh, yield to maturity, yield to call and realized compound yields. Yeh saari aap dekh sakhenge. And isko agar aap zyada thoda sa practice bhi karenge by varial rates, you'll be able to have a better grasp of bond yields. Bond yields ki jab baat ho rhi hoti hai, toh humne yeh bhi dekhna hai, ke bond valuation principles kya hai? How do you evaluate a bond? How do you decide What is a value of a bond? So, bond valuation principles ko agar hum dekhenge, so what do we need to look at? We need to look at the intrinsic value. Jab hum ne equities ki baat ki thi, to tab bhi hum ne intrinsic value ki baat ki thi. Jab hum ye bonds ki baat ka rahe, tab bhi intrinsic value, the inherent strength, the internal strength, the internal ability of product, financial asset to show its strength, to show that it has the ability to grow exponentially and give value to investors the confidence that investors have put in by investing monies into stock or a bond has to be determined by the intrinsic value of course this is an estimated value but you must reach some conclusion based on this estimated value you must also find out the present value of the expected cash flow isko bar bar main dohra raha hu کیونکہ اٹ از آل اباؤٹ فیوچر کیش فلوز جب ہم نے اسٹاکس کی بات کی تھی تب بھی فیوچر کیش فلوز پہ میں ایمفیسائز کر رہا تھا جب بانڈس کی بات کر رہا ہوں تب بھی فیوچر کیش فلوز کی بات کر رہا ہوں کیوں کر رہا ہوں اس لیے کر رہا ہوں کہ ہم فیوچر کے لیے انویسٹمنٹس کر رہے ہیں ہسٹری کے لیے انویسٹمنٹس نہیں کر رہے وی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ فیوچر وی ناٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ پریزنٹ اینڈ آف کورس وی ناٹ ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ آور پاس سنس وی آر انویسٹنگ فار دا فیوچر وی مسٹ ہیو این انٹرنزک ویلیو We must have an estimated value. We must have the present value of expected cash flows to be able to invest in a good product. So, what is required to compute intrinsic value? One, it is the expected cash flows. Two, it is the timing of expected cash flows. And three, the discount rate or the required rate of return, ROR, by investors. Ye, humne uspe bhi padha tha. جب ہم فنڈامنٹل انالیسس کر رہے تھے اور یہ یہاں پہ بھی آپ کی ایک قسم کی ریویژن ہے بٹ ریمبر اٹس آلویز اباؤٹ دا فیوچر اگر آپ یہ سبجیکٹ پڑھ رہے ہیں اگر آپ یہ ٹاپک پڑھ رہے ہیں اٹس فار یور فیوچر گروتھ اگر ہم انویسٹمنٹس کر رہے ہیں تو اب ہم انویسٹمنٹس فیوچر گروتھ کے لیے کر رہے ہیں تو بانڈ ویلیویشنس کے لیے آپ کو انٹرنزک ویلیوز پتہ ہونی چاہیے وہ اسٹیمیٹڈ ہیں لیکن اسٹیمیٹڈ ویلیوز آپ ریکوائرڈ ریٹ آف ریٹرن سے ڈسکاؤنٹ ریٹ سے فیوچر کیش فلو سے آپ ایویلویٹ کر سکتے سو اے ویلیو آف اے کوپن ووڈ ود بی ایٹ دا بیسز آف دا بگیسٹ پرابلم دیٹ وی ہیو از ان ڈٹرمنگ واٹ دا بگیسٹ پرابلم ان ڈٹرمنگ دی ڈسکاؤنٹ ریٹ اور ریکوائرڈ جیل دیر از دا بگیسٹ پرابلم کیونکہ ہم نے ساری یہ اسٹیمیٹس کر دیے ریکوائرڈ جیل آف کورس از دا کرنٹ مارکیٹ ریٹ جو بھی کرنٹ مارکیٹ ریٹ ہے وہی آپ کی ٹیکنیکلی ریکوائرڈ جیلڈ ہے اینڈ ارنڈ آن کمپیرابل بانڈس جو بھی اسی میچورٹی یا سیم میچورٹی کے ساتھ ہیں اور سیم کریڈٹ رسک کے ساتھ ہیں ان کے ساتھ آپ کمپیئر کرتے ہیں اور دیکھتے ہیں کہ کیا ریکوائرڈ جیلڈ ہے جسٹ بریفلی ہیو اے لوک ایٹ انادر اسلائڈ آن یور ٹی وی اسکرینس یہ بھی آپ کو تھوڑا سا اسسٹ کرے گی ان ٹرائنگ ٹو انڈرسٹینڈ بیکاز ہم ویلویشنس کی بات کر رہے ہیں ہم یلڈ ٹو میچورٹی کی بات کر چکے ہیں ہم یلڈ ٹو کال کی بات کر چکے ہیں بانڈ ویلویشن میں یہ جو آپ کے سامنے سلائڈ ہے اس کے اندر جو اکویژن ہے یہ آپ کو ہیلپ کرے گا ٹو گراسپ دا نیچر آف دا سچویشن ان ویلویشنس آف بانڈ 
and then you compare these valuations of bond with similar bonds of comparable returns with comparable risk. ये सारी जब आप credit risk या सारी एक ही maturity dates को देखेंगे, फिर आपको पता चलेगा कि जिस bond में आपने invest करना है, उसकी internal rate of strength क्या है, internal rate of return क्या है, and whether it's going to be good investment based on assumptions of future cash flows. This is important for you to understand when we're talking about bond valuation. So, baat ho gai yield to maturity, baat ho gai yield to call ki, baat ho gai bond ki valuation ki, baat ho gai price sensitivity ki inverse relationship to the yield to maturity, baat ye hai ki ye changes kaise hai. How do all these changes come about in the bond? So, bond price changes have to be looked out as well. Over a period of time, we have noticed that bond prices that differ from face value must change. Bond values ki ye significant factor ko aapne dekhte hain ke over time bond prices that differ from face value must change. Price changes zaroo raheng. Zahir hai, bond prices move inversely to market yield. Inverse relationship hai. Ye price sensitivity ki baat pehne pehle ki thi. Inverse relationship to maturity. Inverse relationship to yield. So, bond prices move inversely to market yield. Expected yield ya rate of returns. In ke saath wo inversely related hai. So, the change in bond prices due to a yield change indirect related to the time to maturity and indirectly related to a coupon rate. Dono, tino, charo, cheesy, is sub apus me ye million yield to maturity, the return that is required, the coupon rate, ye bond price changes kill ye zururi hai. You must understand that these yields are important to get once you look at it, that they are directly related to time to maturity. They are directly related to time to maturity and indirectly related to coupon rate. Do cheese hai yaha pe, aap isko confuse nahi karenge, indirectly related to the coupon rate and directly related to the time to maturity. Do aspects aap ne zehen me rakhte hai, jab hum bond price changes ki baat karein. Kyunke ye change bond prices ki important hai and these are always due to a yield change. Yield change kaise hogi when you will understand the, the composition that yield changes will be directly related to maturity time and indirectly related to coupon rates. And what is a coupon rate? Just to remind you is the rate of interest or the return that you'll be getting on investment. So over period of time, bond prices that differ from face value or printed value or par value must change. Coming ahead with bond price changes would be an interesting thing for you to look at this diagram which is showing you the curve, which is showing you the market yield. If you look at the X and the, and the Y axis, you will be able to look at the price and the market yield. So, bond prices jo hai or unki changes is yield curve se, ya is curve se, or is x axis pe or y axis pe jo price of markets hain ab zyada behtar se dekh sakenge isme aap jo cheez note karenge it is the holding maturity constant if you hold maturity constant a rate decrease will raise prices a greater percentage than a corresponding increase in rates will lower prices look at the diagram and it will tell you that holding maturity constant Maturity period ko ek jaisa rakhe, usko variable na banaye, a rate decrease will raise prices a greater percent than a corresponding increase in rates with lower prices. This is what you looked at when you looked at this slide right now. Prices change. Prices will change. We talked about prices changing with time to maturity and with coupon rates as well. So, we talked about the price changing inversely relationship to the, uh, to the coupon rate and directly related to the yield to maturity. So, 
an increase in price or a decrease in price will obviously affect the rate of return, which would mean holding maturity constant, a rate decrease will bring a change. Ye to baat hogi bond pricing. Jab humne bond pricing ki baat ki, mere liye aapko ye batana zaruri tha, ki ye bond ki valuations ko karna bhi zaruri hai, stocks ki valuations ko bhi karna zaruri hai, because is mein fixed return hai, uh, stocks mein variable return hai, usko agar hum earning per share se dekhenge, to isko hum internal rate of return, aur iski returns jo aapko mil nahi hai, wo yield period se, required rate of return se, کوپن ریٹ سے یل ٹو میچورٹی سے اور انفلیشن سے اور انٹرسٹ سے اور ڈیفالٹ رسک کو بھی دیکھیں گے انٹرسٹ ریٹ رسک کو بھی ہم دیکھیں گے ویل کمپیئر اٹ وتھ ڈفرینٹ بانڈس ٹو فائنڈ آؤٹ وچ از دا بیسٹ بانڈ اینڈ دین ڈیسائڈ ویدر دس از گوئنگ ٹو بی گڈ انویسٹمنٹ اور ناٹ دس از اباؤٹ فکسڈ انکم سیکورٹیز یا بانڈ مارکیٹ سیکورٹیز کے بارے میں آئندہ اس کو تھوڑا سا اور لے کے چلیں گے بٹ بانڈ بیکاز وی اسٹل ناٹ اوور وتھ بانڈ تھینک یو ویری